read through this question on rotational motion and energy carefully, picking out the key facts as you go. Right, let's start by drawing a diagram of the situation that we have here. So we have an anchor. There's my best representation of an anchor. Attached to a cable that passes over a roller of negligible mass and winds around a drum. So our cable looks like that, which then winds around that drum there. The drum has a radius of 1.2 meters and a mass, I'll call that M1, of 350 kilograms. And our anchor has a mass, we'll call that M2, of 500 kilograms. And the anchor drops until it is touching the surface of the sea, and that is a height of 18 meters. And we want to know what is the angular velocity of the drum when the anchor reaches the surface of the water. Now we're given a hint here to use energy considerations. So let's have a think about what's happening. So at the start, before the anchor is released, the system is stationary, and so the anchor has gravitational potential energy as it's above the surface there. So the system starts with gravitational potential energy. As the anchor drops, it's going to increase its speed and gain kinetic energy as it goes down. And at the same time, it's going to pull on the cable, and that's going to set the drum rotating. So at the bottom, when it hits the surface of the water, there's going to be a certain amount of kinetic energy that's linear from the anchor dropping. And there's also going to be kinetic energy in the drum, which is rotating. So we have a linear and a rotational component to the kinetic energy. And although there's this roller here as well, we're told that that has a negligible mass, so we can ignore any rotational kinetic energy in the roller. So now let's think about what each of these expressions uh, is. So gravitational potential energy is given by uh, mass times gravitational acceleration times the height. And here the mass that we want is the mass of the anchor, as that's what's dropping. So that's our m2 times gravitational potential energy times height. Uh, for our kinetic energy, that's the linear component. Again, that's the anchor dropping down. So it's anchor that's moving at the bottom there. So that will be half m2 for the mass of the anchor times the velocity squared. And then our rotational kinetic energy is given the expression a half times moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. And that's the moment of inertia of this drum. And we're told that the drum is a hollow cylinder. So for a hollow cylinder, the moment of inertia from the formula sheet is given as mr squared. So in this case, we're looking at the, the drum. So in this case, that will be the mass of the drum, which we've called m1, times the radius squared. So we can substitute that expression for the moment of inertia into the expression we have already. So it gives us a half times m1 r squared omega squared. And now as it's the angular velocity that we're trying to find, so we're trying to find what this omega is, we need to have a relationship between the linear velocity of the anchor moving down and the angular velocity of the drum spinning around. And that relationship is that the linear velocity v will equal omega r, the angular velocity multiplied by the radius. And as we want to get rid of this v, we want to substitute in to this expression here. So that gives us m2gh equals a half m2 omega squared r squared plus a half times m1 omega squared r squared. So now what we have to do is rearrange this to make omega the subject of the equation. So times in by 2 on both sides gives us 2m2gh is omega squared r squared lots of m1 plus m2. So our expression for omega will be the square root of 2m2gh divided by r squared times m1 plus m2. 
And now all we have to do is fill in the numbers that we know. So our mass M2 is 500 kilograms. Gravitation acceleration is 9.8. The height it's moved through was 18 meters. The radius of the disk was 1.2 meters squared. And the mass M1 was 350 kilograms. Which by my calculations using a calculator gives 12 radians per second.